Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes from a featured category. Today's category is a dish to pass. I'm Beth, and as usual, I'm joined by Katie and Elizabeth. So, Katie, tell us what you made. Okay, uh, the recipe that I am sharing today, I'm excited about this one. I think you guys are both going to like this. It's really fun. It's cucumber, dill, feta, and pistachio salad. And I found this at the website spoonfulofflavor.com. Thought it sounded really unusual and interesting um so it's it, it's very very easy too so you start out by making a quick pickle you just um heat up some apple cider vinegar and salt in a saucepan once it's simmering you add in some minced red onion or shallot so i used red onion and then you remove it from the heat and just let it sit and steep for like 10 or 15 minutes while you make the rest of the salad then you uh, slice up two English cucumbers. I use my mandolin to make like nice thin slices and it was so quick and easy. I really liked that tool for this recipe. Um, and then you just combine your sliced cucumbers, some dill, feta cheese, and some coarsely chopped pistachios. Um, you pour the onion and vinegar mixture over top the whole thing, add some olive oil, um, some black pepper, just toss everything together and serve it. Uh, so I was, we were a little bit like skeptical about the pistachios in this. So at first we, uh, we just thought them kind of off to the side, but once we tasted everything together, we just dumped them right on because it was really Tasty. I liked the crunch of them and the little added flavor that they gave to the salad made it a little bit unusual. I did have this recipe the first time I made it because I just made it for my husband and I, but we liked it so much that like a couple of days later, I just made like the whole batch and we ate that. I haven't actually made this as a dish to pass. I've only made it for us, but I think this is going to be awesome in the summertime for an unusual barbecue dish and I definitely plan on doing that so um I really like this one you guys should try it it's it's a good one yeah I definitely want to try that it sounds super just kind of refreshing to mm -hmm. just like a light side dish that would be awesome in the summer with you know all the other like if I'm grilling meat and I need yeah. something on the side that sounds sounds great yeah I I could probably throw that together with what I have, but I don't have fresh dill, but I think it could still be okay, right? With yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be better with some sort of herb, but um, you could definitely do it without, and I think it would be tasty. And yeah, you can improvise and add other things to sure. it. Even parsley would be good. I think mm -hmm. parsley would be good. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Okay, Elizabeth, tell us about your dish to pass. Sure. So um, I got it. I have to pull up the recipe because I took a picture on my phone because I checked out this cookbook from the library, but then I had to return it. Um, so this cookbook is called Noon, um, N-O-O-N. And it's basically, it's by a German woman and she, it's recipes for like lunch, basically. It's all kind of like quick, fairly simple recipes that one could presumably make for like the midday meal. Um, but, you know, I don't know if I agree with that. Some of the stuff I was, wasn't sure if I would make for lunch, but you know, maybe they do things differently in Germany, whatever. Uh, but um, so my husband's family, we go up North all the time in the summer and they're often grilling or barbecuing or whatever. And um, there's always coleslaw, but like for me, coleslaw in the summer it just kind of doesn't appeal to me I think the like dairy and the heat kind of just like don't work in my mind and I'm always kind of like grossed out by it and so I wanted to make a kind of different take on a slaw that could be used to you know could be brought to a barbecue so I found this in this cookbook and it's um as I said it's it's German um so it's called 
kraut salat with dates and bacon. And this is super easy. Basically, you take um, a green cabbage and shred it up. Um, I just used half because it's like so much cabbage and you're supposed to put it in a bowl and you just sprinkle a little bit of salt and then kind of massage it to soften it a little bit. And then um, you cook, um, you chop up some bacon into small pieces and cook it in a pan, just like you normally would. So it's nice and crispy. Um, and then you basically deglaze the bacon pan with a little bit of um, white balsamic vinegar. I haven't worked with that before, but it was super easy to find at the store. I usually just, if I buy balsamic, it's usually the normal kind, but it was super easy to find. And you kind of um, scrape it all up and pour the bacon bits and the vinegar and everything over the cabbage. And then you um, chop up a couple dates into thin strips and um, add those in. And you um, drizzle a bit of olive oil and then just a little bit of salt and pepper. And it sounds really simple, but the flavors really came together well. I, the dates and the bacon worked together um, and it was really yummy and um, just kind of a cool take on a slaw, you know? Um, and I, I really liked it and everything was really easy to find. I, I did buy like nice medjool dates, you know, and they, they were good. Um, and I, yeah, I enjoyed it. And I'm excited to um, share this with family this summer because I think it will be, um, it'll be a, a nice take and um, what's, what's not to like bacon dates. Yum. So yeah, that, that was my, my dish to pass. Nice. Uh, when you were first talking about the deglazing the bacon, that's what they do for the, for German potato salad, right? Isn't that? That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, but yeah, different take with the cabbage. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, it would sounds almost, great. Yeah. I eat that with brats. It sounds like it's yeah. got some like salty, sweet, all sorts of different flavors in there. And yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was a good find. Yeah. The dates threw me for a second, but then I do love uh, bacon wrapped dates. So mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. It, work out. yeah. it was kind of interesting when I first, I like, when I first read the recipe, I was like, huh? And then I was like, oh no, this all does actually make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. All right, Beth, what's your dish to pass? All right, my friends. So um, I've gotten this book out before by Questlove, Mixtape Potluck. Uh, I made something it didn't turn out because uh, I overcooked it. But this time I was intrigued and hadn't seen this one before. It's called Tina's Cold Pizza. Oh, the it's not pizza, it's a dip. Um, it's by Jerobi White, who was in a, a Tribe Called Quest for their for their first album, and he became a chef, I guess. So um this is so the the premise of this book is like Quest Love has created like the ideal uh uh, uh potluck party. And he so he's gotten recipes from a bunch of his friends, like uh Anyway, lots of Martha Stewart, I mean, all sorts of folks. And then um, and then he associates a song that he thinks would make a good mixtape that's indicative either of the person or the, uh, the, the dish. All right, so enough about that. This is easy to transport. Um, it's, it's basically, okay, like you start with a softened cream cheese because you know, I love it. Um, spread it on a platter or a plate. It calls for adding three quarters of a cup of Heinz chili sauce, which in my past, that is definitely something I would use, but with another recipe that I'll someday share. But um, it, it's, it's got uh, high fructose corn syrup. And so we looked at, Kurt just made some for me. It took him five minutes and I'll share that recipe. It was really good and I'll, I'll do that again. Um, and then you, you put the chili sauce on the cream cheese like you would a pizza, just in the center part, you know. Um, it, it calls for half an onion diced. I had scallions, so I used that. It calls for green pepper. I do not like that. I used a small, um, just a chunk of jalapeno. Called for half a cup of sliced black olives. I used green ones. This is where, okay, then it calls for a pound of frozen 
and thawed cooked shrimp chopped. I ended up using, I just got small like salad, salad shrimp. I was looking for a can, but I couldn't find it. And um, chopped that up and a cup of cooked lump crab meat. Okay, this also says don't skimp on the on the crab. I had a can of crab, just a basic can. So I use that. Um, this pound, the pound of frozen shrimp, that was way too much because what happened was like, I had it on a plate and then I had my cream cheese, I mean, cream cheese and then the red stuff, but because I left that gap and it was, a, it, it didn't like, it was mounding. It was kind of like a layered seafood dip, which was fine too. Um, and then, so the, the crab uh, one and a half cups of grated mozzarella. I think I use Monterey Jack. And then you chill it for 30 minutes to three hours. And then when you take it out, you sprinkle it with a packet of taco seasoning. Um, and which really I just use, which is like, it's an ounce. I think I just use a couple tablespoons full. Um, and I have a picture. I'll show you. And um, you serve it with with a hearty cracker or chip, we used uh, pita chips. And I didn't take this to pass, but we did. We had it for a kind of appetizer with a meal. And it, it was good. It was, I mean, you had me at cream cheese most times. Um, the, it was, you know, the, the seafood part, I mean, you could even do without it, but if you really want to make it super fancy, you could make, you can add like a good, you know, like $35 can, but I don't know. Um, it was, it was, it was good. Kurt liked it. We liked it as leftovers. I might make it again, but I also have a favorite other kind of dip, like I said, that I would probably make instead. So that's my Tina's cold pizza. I like how you used the recipe, but you also used a lot of like substitutions and what you had on hand and stuff. That's really nice, like how versatile it is. And you could really like almost go anywhere as long as you got that base of cream cheese at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the, um, the chili sauce. So the sure. chili sauce recipe I'm sharing, um, it, it says you can add a little horseradish to it for a kick. And that's what we did for this. And it worked. It was really good. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a good little dish to it's pass. <laughs> It surprised me where you went with it. I guess I wasn't expecting the seafood twist, you know? Yeah. That's well, the cool. That was on, you know, yeah, I didn't make that part. Of also, the green olives kind of detracted to me mm -hmm. a little bit. But um, but remember, even though this calls for like a, it, uh, a quantity of ingredients, it was really just barely, like I, I could barely put, you know, enough onions on it. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was good. It was good. I, I nibbled on it for lunch one day. So yeah, that's that. And if we have no other comments about that, you think you'll make it someday? I I think I would try it. I am very unfamiliar with crab. I don't cook with crab. I wouldn't know what's good or not. So I'd have to like, I mean, you said you just had a can. I yeah, it's like a tuna can, but there's other ones that are like thirty-five dollars. That are yeah, that would be the part like that good I good chunks, and you know, if you're making crab cakes, sure, would be what sure, you would sure. want. So yeah, that would be the thing that I would have to like, you know, study up. Study up. Study up. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna take us out now and say thank you for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about. Join us next time when we'll be asking ourselves, where's the beef? We look forward to see what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share. Share a little recipe with recipe share.